Hi, this is Fred Copestake, your host to the Selling Through Partnering Skills podcast. Based on the book, the podcast explores how sales professionals can use the power of partnering intelligence to take their selling to the next level. By combining the skills associated with better partnering and existing best practice, salespeople can ensure their approach is more modern and collaborative. There are six elements to PQ, and in each episode, we look at how sales professionals have used these and how their insights can contribute to your success. Hello. So this episode, we have Stuart Taylor, who is Head of Sales Development at Refract. I'm really excited to have him on for this uh, for this episode because uh, I know he's got quite a lot of opinions on sales. Uh, we seem to share a lot of them, but maybe we won't all. Uh, we'll soon find out as we as we go through the rest of this conversation. Um, so yeah, welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us, Stuart. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Perhaps you could just give a little bit of a background on yourself before we start getting into the elements of PQ. Yeah, sure. So probably like a lot of the listeners, I kind of fell into sales and didn't know what to do as a young lad. And I've been in sales now coming up to 15 years, selling everything from secondhand cars to Premier League hospitality um, and now in, in, in software sales, which is, is where I love. So yeah, long career in sales and, you know, learned a lot along the way, made a lot of the mistakes and hopefully I can share a few of the things that I've learned along the way today. Premier League hospitality, as in the football? It's in the football, yeah. It's not Premier League now, it's League One. I used to work for <laughs> Sunderland Football Club, um, selling hospitality and advertising when I was about 21, um, which was interesting. But yeah, it's, it's League One now. It was Premier League when I was there. I say that since I've left, it went downhill. But... Oh, I think there's clearly there's a connection between that. <laughs> Must be, got to be, got to be. <laughs> and uh, perhaps you could just give us a little bit more detail on your current role, because I know that it's going to inform what we talk about. So it's really worthwhile just sort of putting that out there at the moment. Yeah, sure. So I work for a company called Refract. Uh, I've been there about four and a half years now. I'm head of sales development, which involves working with a team of SDRs um, who are prospecting via the phone, LinkedIn, email to create appointments and opportunities for our BDM team. Um, so I lead up that team. I'm responsible for the numbers and making sure that the team hit those numbers and coaching and developing the team. Very much, I, I love it because I get to work with, you know, some, some really young, eager people who are blank slates and have got a lot to learn, but are really ambitious and, and coachable and want to learn. And it's fantastic to see people come in hire a lot of grads who've never worked in sales before they come in day one you know thinking life's going to be really easy find out it's a little bit harder than what they want but then they work hard and they get there in the end and you know they go on to have really good careers so it's a really rewarding job that i love doing fantastic and and again can you just give us a little bit more on what refract is if you could just put that into a nutshell yeah sure so refract is, is a sales coaching platform so effectively what we're doing is helping salespeople have better conversations we understand, you know, unfortunately, sales people don't get the help and coaching that they deserve and that they want, um, and Refract helps them get that. So we analyze sales conversations, finding mistakes, missed opportunities, and moments of brilliance, you know, leaning on artificial intelligence and machine learning to pick out those moments from calls, but ultimately helping improve the quality of conversations and helping sales reps get the support and coaching that they need. Fascinating stuff, and I've seen it, and I, 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 love, I love the product. I think it's great. But, but more importantly, yeah. so what we're getting today is we've got a sales professional who is not only does, but is a sales leader and works with a product that helps salespeople get it better. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I'm immersed in this world. We drink our own champagne. You know, coaching is, is everything in, in, in our world. I speak with, you know, leaders like yourself every day, for and people who have been there, done that. And, you know, it's a really fortunate position because I get to learn every day, learn from people. Um, and it, it's really, really fortunate to be in that position. But obviously, I'm doing it every day as well. So... I'm not a, a person who's got a lot of experience in theory. We do it D&D out here at Refract and we're grinding like a lot. I'm sure the listeners are and trying to work things out as we go and get better every day. Superb. We better crack on then and start breaking down these elements of PQ and have sure. some insights that you can, you can give to us uh, around each of these. Um, like many of my guests, you probably won't have come across the concept of partnering intelligence in itself. But when we look at the different parts of it, you know, you you will recognize you'll recognize these bits and sort of have some ideas and, and things that we can we can talk about uh so look we'll just go through each of these and again any insights any thoughts tidbits things you think help listeners in applying this in sales that's what we're that's what we're after um good so i mean if we start off with the ability to trust you know that's that's i always kind of look at that one first because for me it is the foundation of all relationships and without trust, communication suffers and the well, <laughs> whole thing falls apart, really. So, again, you know, what, are, what are your thoughts on ability to trust and how can we help salespeople to build that? 
I think you're dead right. First and foremost, I, I would agree 100% with what you said. I think it is the foundation of any conversation, whether that be a sales conversation or life, you know, friendships, relationships, everything is built on trust. And if, if that trust is broken and not established, then, then things fall flat on the face. But I think especially so in sales, but I think it's changing, Fred. I think the world of the sales professional is changing. You know, you and I are probably both old enough to remember, you know, the, the classic salesman who had the gift of the gab and would always be closing. And that was the kind of mentality and, and what the industry was portrayed as. But I do think that fortunately is changing for the better. You know, those days are behind us. And I think salespeople are proud of their profession more and, you know, seeing themselves as professionals and want to get better. And I think salespeople now have that attitude. Or certainly the good ones that I speak with have the attitude that they, they want to help their prospects. And they want to, you know, if, when you naturally want to help your prospects and you've got integrity and you're honest, that helps build trust. And when you've got trust, you know, it makes everything far more easy, uh, far easier than, than what it was. But trust, integrity um, and honesty, I think, are the main pillars of anything that, you know, we certainly do at Refract in any conversation we have with a prospect. Those three things are the, are the foundation of, of any decent relationship we try to build with a prospect. Excellent. Yeah, I, I do kind of remember. It's kind of very 80s selling, wasn't it? Greed is good. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I kind of always yeah. get the, the mental image of Gordon Gecko, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, I, I back in back into the days I I worked selling secondhand cars, so very much immersed in that industry. And that might be a little bit behind the professional software sales I work in now, and and that was very much the attitude, you know. And that gets a bad reputation, and rightly so. But the the there is good people in that industry as well. But yeah, uh, hopefully those days are behind us, and and the example for the gift of the gab and the the sleazy salesperson. Are hopefully behind us and we're going in the right direction as a profession. I, I think so I mean and I quite often do talk about sales is becoming more collaborative than ever mm -hmm. I think that's probably the right the right word to, to encompass some of the things that you're saying um, and, and certainly if you look at another of the elements of partnering skills at PQ we talk about a win-win orientation yeah. so I mean really just continuing what you're talking about there how can we help people? How can we help salespeople to, to develop that? Massive win-win massive is, is essential. You know, I think, again, one-sided relationships never work out. And that's both ways. You know, you've got to make sure that you, we've all had that prospect who will, will push really hard and wants everything from the deal. And they're sometimes the worst, you know, prospects you can bring on board because you don't want that relationship. So you've got to know what your level is. And it's got to be win-win from both parties. You've got to deliver a fantastic service or product to your customers that pleases them and you know gives them the results that they want. But also, you've got to win in that situation as well, and not and not be afraid to push back and make sure that you're going to win from the, the opportunity as well. I think a lot of junior prospects can be bullied by prospects sometimes. Uh, junior sales people can be bullied and, and don't necessarily get that win-win relationship. And then obviously, there's the other side of the coin where salespeople want everything and try to push people down into a solution that isn't really going to solve the problems and maybe be a little bit dishonest about how to get there, which is, is the worst thing you can do. So yeah, for me, it, it, it's a massive thing. It, it is. And as you say, it, it is both ways. And I, I think that is, it's something that we probably don't speak of quite as much, which is that the salesperson has got to sort of stand their own ground, if you like, and, and make sure that it is a, a, a fair or mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah, how do you, I had a, a how do you help junior people do that? Sorry to... You, no, no, not at all. Sorry for jumping in. Uh, to, to really understand what you know, what your what your worth is as well. You know what you're bringing to this relationship, and you are an expert in your product, and you are an expert in helping prospects if they're your ideal customers solve those problems. You've got to be really confident. I sometimes say to the, the reps in our team who are junior, and this is a really extreme example, but it's just to try and demonstrate the point. You've got to imagine when you pick up the phone and, and you're called calling a prospect, you've got the solution to their biggest problems. Think of a doctor ringing a patient with a cure to their problems, picking up the phone. If you don't do it, you're almost, you know, you're not doing your job or you, you, you're avoiding helping that person with their massive problems. And having that confidence in your product and the confidence that you can help solve their challenges helps you have that self-worth. And then when you've got that self-worth and you know what you're worth, you're more confident about pushing back. And a big part of it is being confident enough to push back and just saying, look, you know, we really want to work with you. We really want to help with you. However, this has got to be a mutually beneficial relationship. There's things we need to get from this agreement as well as what you need to get from this arrangement as well. And you know, hopefully, like you see, it'll be a win-win situation and we'll all do very, very well from this relationship. And that, that's the goal. And if one side starts to bully the others and wins, then that relationship is doomed to failure from the outset, in my opinion. I love it. I love what you're saying with the understand what your worth is, because what I heard there is you always talking on two levels, both mm -hmm. as in this is the solution we offer, 
you know, this is our spangly product, service, whatever. But this is what I bring. This is what yeah. I bring as your salesperson because I'll understand you and I'll make sure we do the right the right thing. So it's, it's, it's that individual worth you're using to to using that kind of expression to build people's own self up. Yeah, hundred percent. And I this is again something we teach a lot in Refract, and it's about seeing yourself on a par with your prospects. I work with a lot of graduates who come into Refract and have never worked in sales before in their life. And they think, Stu, how can I sell to a VP of sales? How can I sell to somebody like Fred who's been doing this, you know, X number of years and knows sales inside out? And I said, well, yes, but you know things they don't. You know things about your product. You know case studies and stories of how you've helped similar people that they're not aware of. So the things you bring to the table, doesn't matter who the prospect is, that you know that they don't and you've got to be confident in that and you've got to see yourself on a par on a level with your prospect and that's the relationship you want to start you know start having with your prospect a lot of salespeople, you know um are, are serving their prospect and not necessarily on a par and they you know they, they get pushed about and do everything but you need to be a, a level playing field with your prospect and that's when you start to like i say have some really good conversations and that's what your prospects want you know they don't want somebody who rings them and is a yes person who's just going to do whatever they want they want you to be that expert who brings ideas to the table Everybody wants somebody who's going to come to the table and help them. You know, if I ring a, a plumber and I've got a problem, I don't want him to say, oh, well, we could do this if you think that'll be all right. I want him to say, look, Stu, your pipe's leaking, you need to change your ball socket or whatever, and I want him to provide the answers. And that's what your prospects want. They want you to be an expert, and they want you to provide solutions to their problems. I love that plumber analogy. You saw me scribbling yes. away there. I've taken that one. <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell I know nothing about plumbing because there'll be people who are far more educated than me and that's something I'm thinking, what the hell is a ball socket? But yeah, you do. get the idea. <laughs> I, I do. That, to be fair, I'll probably get the most feedback on the whole of the episode, won't it, from all irate plumbers <laughs> writing yeah, in. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> probably. No, but you're, you're absolutely right with that. And, I mean, it, it does kind of naturally, you know, we're talking about collaboration and it, you know, kind of having this sort of mutual um, benefit to the point that, and, and this is one of the other elements of PQ, of the partnering skills, which is about interdependence. You know, that we, that both parties are taking something from it. And we both need each other to, to make the best from it. And I guess that's what you're saying. And how, could you elaborate could any further on that? How would you get yeah. to strike that balance? Again, it is about being that, that, that expert and, and a big thing we do, especially from a call, calling point of view, is leading with problems that are res going to resonate with your prospect. So if you've got your ideal customer profile, who are the people who will best you know, benefit from your product, when you first engage with those problems, don't be the classic salesperson and go into a pitch about all of the great with bells and whistles that your product has. What you want to do is lead with the problems that they're likely facing and just see if they're bumping into any of those challenges. If they're not, fine. You know, they're not the right prospect. You don't need to speak to them anymore. Not everybody is going to have problems that you solve. What you need to do is find the people that have those challenges and those are the people that you need to spend your time with. Um, but leading with problems rather than features and, and you know, benefits of your, of your platform is, is a massive game changer because here the prospect thinks, ah, this person actually knows my world. They know what I'm bumping into. They know the challenges I have. So they're going to be far more interested in hearing you out rather than just a classic salesperson who said, we've got this product who does this, 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 and this. And you start, you know, feature bashing and giving a whole host of information about the product that nobody's really interested in. I don't know about anybody else, but when I get sales calls and somebody rings me trying to sell to me and they start going into pitch mode and telling me all about it, I just switch off. I'm not interested. But if somebody can ring me and say, you know, Stu, are you struggling to do a convert, get your conversion rate from cold calls from 15 to 20 percent. Would you like some ideas on how we're helping X, Y, and Z do it? Who are similar companies? I'm like, well, yeah, go on then. I'm far more interested when they speak to my problems. Absolutely, and and then there is a time for the features, advantages, and benefits, which is when we've established that yeah, we can do something together here. Yeah, we can get that element of interdependence as there's you know, the basis for a decent business relationship rather than totally. just a couple of people who like chatting. I mean, that's almost like another, <laughs> that's another just relationship for relationship's sake is another completely different strand. We we probably don't want to go down that rabbit hole just yet. Probably haven't, <laughs> probably haven't got time, but you're dead right though. Once, you know, that's part of the product demo. You know, a lot of people say to me, what's the perfect product demo? The perfect product demo is showing your prospect how you solve the problems that we've identified they have. And, and that's it. It really is that simple. If, if you've done a good discovery call with a customer and you found out they have problems, the demo is the easy bit. You know, it's the prescription. 
we talk a lot about the doctor patient relationship in refract and as salespeople trying to be the doctor when you, you want to find out what their problems are a doctor doesn't just throw pills at people and say take these you know you, you'll be better they find out what your problem is they ask you questions they're experts and they then prescribe the solution and that's what we need to do with salespeople Funny enough, I, I do use the expression prescription without diagnosis is malpractice quite a lot. I mean, I don't know whether the medical profession actually say that. <laughs> I hope they do because I've used it for many years, but because it makes so much sense, you know, because of what you've, what you've just said there. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's what we need to get to as salespeople, you know, doing that. That's when you, you're selling at a higher level and you, you're really helping people rather than, like you say, throwing things at people. But it works both ways as well. What you've got to be what you've got to have the ability to do is understand people who aren't you know suffering with those problems and aren't a good fit for your product and you've got to be confident to say to people you know and this comes back to the integrity and the, and the honesty and the, and the building the trust is to say look i don't think this is for you this, this isn't the right solution we help with x y and z you seem like you've got this tied up and it's going pretty well it's not one of your top priorities um, and that's the other the other side of the coin i think salespeople can be a little bit of guilt a little bit guilty of trying to sell their product to everyone but you need to get out of that mentality and be, don't be scared to say to people, you know, this isn't for you. I don't think, you know, you're going to get a much benefit from, from our solution um, and qualify those people out as well. That, that's a big part of, of, of that trust thing, building that trust as well. It is. I think qualifying out is one of the, one of the things that salespeople find so difficult. It, it's kind of counterintuitive, but when mm -hmm. people get it, that's when you really see a, you know, a, a high performer. Because you know, they understand kind of more than just criteria. They get the whole kind of even what goes around comes around and that this person might be right at some stage. Well, let's not burn bridges now. Well, let's not totally. What you find though twofold for me, qualifying out is a big part of what we've worked on at Refract. And what you find from qualifying out, sometimes the prospect will push back and they'll start to give you other reasons why this shouldn't be qualified out. Almost saying, <laughs> actually, no, I do have that problem. We find that a lot. You know, they've been maybe keeping their cards close to the chest. But when you start to push and say, look, I don't think it's from you, they start to trust you for starters because they realize yes. you're not just pushing any solution on them. And they start to say, well, actually, I do have these couple of challenges. Maybe it's worth a conversation. Or if they don't, fine. You know, you're also not bloating your pipeline with people that are never going to close. I was guilty of it in the past, having a massive pipeline and, you know, thinking, oh, this guy's going to come back to me. This, this girl's going to come back to me. And it just never happens. You know, you're building your strategy and your pipeline and hope. And you cannot do that, you know, and it makes it so difficult when you've got bloated pipelines, your VP of sales can't predict what's likely to close. It's just a nightmare. So when you can get good at qualifying out, you know, it makes life far easier for every step of the process. So we've got we've got so many topics again, another full hour just on yeah. just on qualification. But uh, but I, I, I do want to I do want to kind of keep the conversation moving because another of the elements of PQ is that of self disclosure and feedback. So this is all about salespeople telling a bit about themselves, if you like, or about their company and sort of sharing information, but also not just about themselves, but potentially about the customer. What are your thoughts on that and how can salespeople get stronger at it? Yeah, it's, it's a really good topic. So it, I, what you said is, is the big thing, I think, is salespeople, what we need to do. The, the first thing is self-reflection and being honest with yourself where you're at. But we have a big thing within sales about, you know, trying to get better every day in any way, um, but also not being scared of failure and embracing failure um, as a business. You know, that's in our culture at Refract. We have a, we have a saying in Refract where if, if you have a call and it goes particularly bad or, you know, you pick up the phone and you can't get past the gatekeeper, we have a phrase where we move on. Um, and that's a big thing within Refract where you don't get too downtrodden um, when things don't go, quite go your way. But we also have a culture of learning every day. We don't make mistakes. We try to say, you know, we learn. And any time we do something, we don't do it particularly well. Then it's an opportunity to learn from that. So for us, it's, it's a massive part of the culture that we have in Refract and, and something that, you know, has is, is helped me accelerate my sales career since I've embraced that in the last four years, probably more than it did for the decade before that. So this is, this is all about the feedback to the salesperson. And then let me just, I, I was trying to capture those because there were some really nice little sound bites. Get better every day in every way, I think you said. Yeah. Is that right? Definitely. Don't be scared of failure. And you kind of summarize this stuff into, into move on. Mm -hmm. just, just talk a tad more about move on because that could yeah. sound defeatist, but I, I'm pretty sure that's not what you meant. <laughs> 
No, it's, it's definitely not defeatist. I, I guess sometimes you, you do get defeated and it's not been too downtrodden. You know, working in sales, it's one of the industries where, you know, unfortunately we are going to face rejection. We are going to have failure. Um, and you've almost got to embrace that and, and get the mentality where it happens and we move on. We have back in the office, pre-COVID days, we had a big, um, a big sort of sticker on the wall that said, we move on those three little words. And it makes a massive difference, but it also detaches yourself from the outcome. We're not worrying about the outcome, going back to the sales, you know, trying to sell some, something to somebody. We're detaching ourselves from the outcome. We're more interested in finding out about that prospect, trying to find if they have problems and needs, and then see if we can help. If we've done everything we can, ask great questions, had a great discovery, and it doesn't go our way, then, you know, we move on. We've done everything we can. We've done everything in our power. The outcome is a little bit out of our control. So that attitude where we're not concerned by the outcome helps so you can pick up the phone next time and start to make that next call call. Um, and that's why we've got that we move on mentality because we know we do everything right in our power. Sales is one of those games, Fred, as you and I know really well, where you can do everything right. You can do a great demo and the prospect won't buy. You know, there's reasons out of your control why they might not buy. Um, and, and that's part of what you've got to get used to and you know, almost develop that thick skin. And when you've got that and you detach from the outcome and you focus on the things that you can control and doing those to the best of your ability, it makes the game far easier. That's brilliant. No, thank, thank you for elaborating on that. I think that's a really, really useful, very interesting um, way, to, way to look at that. And, and so just, I mean, again, I'm, I kind of got a bit of an eye on the clock, but because uh, <laughs> I suspect we could go on and on and on and on about any of this. Probably. But, um, the other thing that the, the sort of looking at partnering intelligence and partnering skills helps us is that we need to be comfortable with change, both as salespeople and as as almost like change agents and helping customers to do that. Again, I'd love some of how you guys at Refract look at that because it sounds like you've got some very, very forward-thinking things. I'm picking up some lovely sound bites here. <laughs> good, good, please. It's, 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 it's uh, relevant. Yeah, change is massive. You know, let's just look at the current situation. Overnight, the world changed and we had to adapt. But I guess it, what we can get of anything from the COVID situation and lockdown is how actually resilient we are and how able and, and capable we are of changing. You know, change is not a bad thing, but there is positives that will come from this situation, shitty as it's been. Um, there's definitely massive positives that people will take from this and things that they've learned, you know, that will help moving forward. But as a business as well, it's your prospects. Change is scary. And that's the big thing about sales. You need to get your prospects to understand that change is good and that changing or moving to your product or solution and that new place that they'll be in is better than where they are today. Most sales opportunities are not lost because you did a bad job. They're lost to status quo. People stay as they are. They didn't have the appetite to change. And that's normally because you haven't showed them the solution. Or some prospects, when you speak with them, everybody talks about you know, finding the problems. Some people are not aware they have a problem. And that's on you to educate the customer. And it might not be a problem. It might just be showing them a better solution than what they do today. They might be very happy with what they're doing. However, you need to show them that there's a better life out there and a better way of doing things and a thing that can be more profitable for them and more time saving and, you know, help them get that promotion. So as change agents, it's the big thing that we're trying to do. Nothing gets sold unless there's change. And, and that's the truth of it. And status quo is the biggest challenge to all salespeople. Um, you know, the majority of opportunities go dark because people don't change. They just stay as they are. They're quite happy plodding away. Um, and then, you know, they don't see how much better things can be or they don't see it as a big enough problem, which is our jobs as salespeople to show them that and enlighten them. It is absolutely, as you say, status quo, and just carrying on doing what you've always done is, um, yeah. It's, <laughs> and, you know, again, another episode on just listing our own personal <laughs> losses, fails. I don't know when, we've not helped somebody move forward and become almost more future oriented. And then, and that is kind of the last, the last little bit that I want to talk about within, within partner intelligence, the people who are good at this stuff and can apply these skills. They tend to have a better future orientation. So again, it's, it's really interesting. You talk about how you're developing your team and helping them with this. How would you help them become more, more future oriented? It's about being open-minded, you know, and embracing change, you know, and, and not being not being scared of it. It's a bit like failure, you know. I spoke earlier about you know embracing failure and being comfortable with failure and trying to change the mentality to learning from it. Change is inevitable, and the people who embrace change, 
you know, are the ones that are going to be successful. Um, and, and that's very much the mentality that we have. But like a lot of things in sales, I do think it's a mentality. I think a lot of people can get stuck in the ways and scared of change. And that's true of any form of life, whether that's sales or, you know, in, in our home lives as well. Being, being reluctant and scared of change is a bad, is a bad place to be. Um, I think, you know, to continue doing what you're doing and, and not look to improve is, is, is madness, in my opinion. You know, you've always got to be trying to get better or you're going backwards. And that's the only way to do that is by changing. Well, it's madness according to Einstein as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, it is. And, 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 you share an opinion with quite a high-level yeah. thinker there. <laughs> I, I, I might have copied that off him. I think he's probably a little bit more intelligent than me, so we'll, we'll let him have that, uh, that quote. Yeah, but it, it is. It's right, isn't it? You know, it I can't right. argue it's with him. It is dead right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take on the Eagles MC squared soon as well. That was him, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was, I think so, yeah. It's gone off you about that, though. <laughs> um, no, no you, you're dead right, that, it is, but but you know, people do find it difficult, and particularly in a sort of period of massive change. You know, you talk about COVID at the moment, where people get hit with that kind of freeze, fight or flight type thing, and some people will move forward forward quite fast, won't they? And and be there, and you know, I'm happy, I'm I'm, I'm adapting to this, I can see the opportunities. Others potentially aren't, and and I think we do need to recognise where somebody else is to 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 make sure we're not rushing them but equally we do want to try and to try and help them i think it's educating them isn't it you know everybody change it's the fear of change because as humans we start to think of the things that can go wrong you know that's just human nature when, whenever we're, we're faced with change and something different we, we naturally start to think of the things that can go wrong but there's also massive positives that can come from that change as well and as you mentioned as change agents as salespeople, we need to, to speak with our salespeople, uh, with our prospects about what the vision can be of what things can be you know after they've implemented your solution or or what the, what the future can be once it once the, they have changed it's, it's about trying to paint that picture and making them aware of you know life can be better and, and the improvement that can be made can be made we, we do a thing at refract which has worked quite well um a lot of people might be familiar with with ant middleton who's a, an s an ex ses guy he talks about a thing called fear bubbles and um, where he he moves from fear bubble to fear bubble where there's always things in life that you're going to be scared of, change, you know, coming on this podcast, there's obviously nervousness and, and everything, but you've just got to try and go from one to the next one and pop those fear bubbles because really, you know, growth and improving doesn't happen in your comfort zone. You need to step outside that comfort zone and move forward. And that's personally, but that's also from your prospects and about trying to get them to understand that, you know, staying doing what you are, you're never going to get that promotion that you want or whatever their personal aspirations are. You need to t assign your product and solution to their personal aspirations and helping them achieve that. And that's when change gets done, in my opinion. That's brilliant. I think what's also brilliant is that we've moved from the theory of relativity um, <laughs> to special services <laughs> in the military yeah. in, in, in one short step. That's, that's wicked. Now, now you know how my team feel when I bounce about everywhere. <laughs> and they're like, Stu, what are you talking about today? <laughs> I, I'm guessing going back to the comfort with change that they probably are just because they're still there and they can do yeah. it. Okay, he's gone from there to there. Yeah, we'll be back to something. No, that, but, that, yeah. but that's brilliant. And, and, and no, and, and I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but I love bringing in different perspectives, different ways of looking at something because otherwise we're just kind of banging on about sales, 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 sales. It, it's useful to say, look at what they do, you know, in, in special forces, mm -hmm. but they do work under extreme pressure. You know, think about what Einstein said, look at what sports people do. There's, there's so many useful things that we can sort of take and go, oh, can it help me get better? I'll have a bit of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And sports is a massive thing for sales. You know, how many professional sportsmen at the top of their game have coaches right. probably all of them but yeah sales people how many sales people have coaches how many people you know have a, a manager or a coach or a mentor that helps them get better not enough scarily few in fact and, and that's a massive problem i think with our industry and you know you can learn a lot from the parallels of sport we can i mean it kind of does fall down on the win-win bit because <laughs> sport tends to look for win but but when we're talking elite performance absolutely sport gives us so much and and yeah and the top performers it's not do they have a coach it's how many do they have because yeah. of different coaches for different parts of the game or nutrition or psychology or, or whatever so um yeah i love tapping into that area because i like sport too so <laughs> um <laughs> Oh no! Look, that's brilliant. So, oh, I mean, thinking about about future, like time has just flown. But so, thinking about the future, yeah, you know, what what does the future have in store for you? 
what's what's I next? <laughs> I wish I knew that. <laughs> I don't know. No, at the minute, you know, building building refract. We're really, I'm really loving the job at the moment and loving what the, the vision of what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to improve salespeople and help them get better. You know, loving the journey of where we're going at the moment and we're trying to trying to reach more people and help more people improve and and really like yourself, passionate about improving the sales profession. I love this profession. I know how good it can be. I know it gets to stick sometimes and can get a hard time and people just think, you know, you, you're only after commission and I think that, that's wrong. You know, there's good salespeople out there fighting the good fight and I'm trying to get that message across and helping people improve. So being part of that, that world as well and trying to get the message out there is definitely where my kind of passion lies now. And helping people get better, you know, my team personally, helping them improve every day, but also on LinkedIn, you know, we started doing some podcasts and some, um, some, some webinars and things recently. And we get loads of messages from people where they've implemented the things that we've mentioned and it's helped them get better. And that's massive for me. You know, I, I really love getting that kind of feedback and helping people improve. So I see my, my career moving forward, more helping people improve. Fantastic. So, so how can people get in touch with you then, Stuart? What's the best yeah. way to... I might get lots of call calls or pick up the phone, give me a buzz. My, my mobile number's on LinkedIn. If you want to try and pitch me your product, I'll, I'll hear you out. I'm, I'm not a hypocrite. I'll take call calls. My email address is stuart at refract.ai. LinkedIn, I'm all over LinkedIn. If you want to get in touch on LinkedIn, connect with me, please, and, and drop me a message. Um, but yeah, anybody wants to get in touch, wants to drop me a message, I'm more than happy to have a, a chat or a conversation. And I would say that they should connect with you on LinkedIn. That, that's, how, that's how we kind of met because I think, and I said to you before we kind of start recording, but the stuff that you're providing is useful. Every post I've read, I've thought, oh, okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, that's, I, I think people should do. And if they want to pitch you, great. You know, pitching a sales coach is ah, at least you're confident, if nothing else. Definitely. <laughs> and if nothing else, I'll give you some feedback. <laughs> Well, you know, some of the products we bought, you know, that, that's relevant. You know, some of the best products we bought within Refract who have really helped us have been from cold calls. So cold calling, it's definitely not dead. And uh, people happily, I'll happily take people's calls and I'll tell you if it's something that is, is, is an opportunity to help us or not. Um, but yeah, if they do want to pitch me, then feel free to do so. Yeah, I was, I was thinking more they might want to get in touch to understand a little bit more about how Refract can help them get, get better because um, I say I, I know the product and, and I know it can. If they, if they, again, if they're right, like you've said, it could no doubt make a, make a big impact. 100%. That, that too as well. Anybody wants to find out more about Refract, by all means, get in touch. <laughs> that would be nice as well. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Look, Stuart, thank cool. you so much for your time. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, Pleasure. I love some of the stuff you said. I've been super, super see me. We've got the cameras on and I'm scribbling away. I've got so many little sound bites that, you know, you, you might well log into one of my webinars at some stage and think, oh yeah, I recognise that. <laughs> <laughs> what it's all about, isn't it? Imitation is the highest form of flatter, flattery. You know? Of course it is. Of course it is. I didn't invent this stuff. I just learned it along the way and I'm just, I'm just sharing it with everybody else. No, that's, that's great, mate. That's really, really good. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. Good to speak with you. Yeah, good to speak to you, Stuart. Thank you for listening to the Selling Through Partnering Skills podcast with me, Fred Copesnake. If you liked it, why not leave a review? If you didn't, also leave one. Remember, it's all about the feedback. If you want to learn more about your own PQ, why not go to the book website, which is www.throughpartnering.co.uk, and there you can take a little self-audit. And of course, if you want to get in touch to talk about how you can use partnering skills, you can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So until next time, keep thinking about how you can adopt a more modern and collaborative approach to selling by selling through partnering skills.